Sarah uh, Louise. Sarah Louise. Susie Louise. <laughs> Susie Marie. Susan Marie Meister Butler's here. Episode oh. 361. How are you, Sarah? Just wonderful. Good. Uh, that's the sun exciting. is shining. The birds are chirping. Oh, Lord. The, the <laughs> Tinder dates are rolling in. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but I'm not. That's hilarious. I think that I don't think most people are using Tinder for like proper dates. I think you're unusual. I think you might be right. But see, that's like how I play it. Like, I think the people go in like on these dates, like expecting that they're going to like it. Especially when it's like a chick who like doesn't put any words on her profile. It's just like, (laughs) look at this hot picture of me at the beach. And then, you know, the way they get there, and I'm like, let's talk and share and connect in a deep emotional way. (laughs) <laughs> Do you get the feeling when you're with these people that they're like, huh? At first, maybe, yeah. 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 But then I just like, you know, come on, who doesn't want a second date with me? I like win them over with my charm. Oh my freaking, I'm freaking adorable and hilarious. What's not Have you been ghosted by anyone yet? N- no. See, you're a hot, yeah. hot item. Mm. But then again, it's, you know, it's still new and I'm, I'm like only like. There's still time. It's not like there's a bunch of people I'm dating on here. It's like, you know. Likely Who knows? story. Right. I just, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm just oh, living thanks. vicariously through you. Thanks. You know, just, mm-hmm. just trying to keep my options open. Yeah. You know, as they, as they say. That's smart to do because sometimes it can feel like you just want to jump back into it. Another, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, and I think that maybe in the very, like, in the, yeah, it's kind of like I've, I've taken a step back and been like, hmm. How do I want this to go? Because now I get to really just make the rules. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I get to rewrite the rules and like do things, like date my, on my terms. I don't know mm-hmm. why I felt like I didn't that I didn't do that before. Maybe just feeling like I don't know. It's kind of like our role as women, and we're supposed to act a certain way, and you're supposed to do certain things, and da da da. Like I just, I'm like, I throw all that out the window, and I'm just like <laughs> me on my date and whatever they. You know, take it or leave it. I Do you ever know. have moments when you're on the date where you, you suddenly are like, oh, no, I'm not into this at all? No. And I think it's – well, first of all, I, there's a heavy vetting system or whatever they call that. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, yeah. These, All these – all these – all these this, all of these, the two, <laughs> or whatever, are, are heavily vetted before I say yes to a first date. And then – uh and then I think, you know, it's just like what my, my philosophy as a therapist, that I can find pretty much anything that I can connect with somebody on. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I have to remind myself that just because I can connect deeply with people in certain areas doesn't mean that they're going to be fulfilling all of my needs or, you know, in all areas. I tend to kind of do that. Like somebody was describing this to me a bit ago that, you know, there are people who kind of feel like they are a prism of a whole bunch of different colors. And then yeah. there are some people that are like one color. And if you are a prism of colors and you meet somebody who's one color, you're like, hey, blue, blue, we both have that. But then if you're like, oh, blue, but I kind of want to be a little bit of red sometimes, they're like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? I'm blue. You should be blue too. And so like you got to find somebody who has those different, I don't know, colors that you're mm-hmm. – that kind of Or it's fine you. just letting you be yes. a rainbow too. Totally. Ooh, how yeah. beautifully said. Correct. <laughs> how beautifully I love said. that. Fucking make that into a shirt. That's great. <laughs> Fucking make that into a shirt. Oh, God, Sarah. Yeah. Well, I will tell you a funny thing, what one of my moves is, you know, when they ask me, like, what I do, and I'm always like, ooh, do uh, I lead with, I'm a therapist, yeah. which is awful, right, right. That or do I uh, say that I host a podcast, and then I have to, like, come back and be like, well, like, a real podcast, like, not like <laughs> one of those that, like, everybody else goes to the, so I just send them a link to our Inc. magazine uh uh, seven seven top podcasts to help you distress out. Oh, yeah. that's good. And people are always like, damn. So there you go. Yeah, right. We have credentials. It's totally. We have been validated by, you know, the the mm-hmm. fake news media. <laughs> totally. I'm into it. Yeah. Anybody else want to write any articles about us that I can send out to my uh, dates, please? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what if I just send them uh, 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 screenshots of our five-star reviews? <laughs> hey, guys. Make sure you submit a five star review because you might be discussed on one of my first dates. <laughs> right. And make it fair, funny and witty and hilarious. Just say things like Sarah has the voice of an angel. Correct. <laughs> there you go. 
Yes. Well, I had an adventure, as you know. I went to Philadelphia yes. and uh, city of brotherly was, love. Yes, I've never been there either, which is so weird because I'm from Pennsylvania. But um, it, uh, first of all, what a lovely city! I don't know really? why people oh. take a shit on it. It was so pretty. Who's taking a shit on it? Like I feel maybe it's just Pittsburghers. <laughs> oh, that might be it because I kind of have this like I don't know, almost like romanticized view of it. Yeah, where like it seems like that like old america like i don't know in my mind like buildings look architecturally yeah like, historical and they have yeah. libraries i don't know yeah my in fact the person i went to her party she said that her house is in um the city and all the the properties used to be owned by one guy and he owned i forget if it was like a coal a farmstead or coal something whatever but all the homes underneath are connected by like underground oh, tunnels wow see that kind of shit is cool yeah i love that's it that's what i thought i'm like oh my god there's a story about everything it's totally. kind of like when we go to england they have all these like plaques everywhere and stuff and she yes. was saying yes. she saw a plaque one time that said on this on uh whatever day in 17 whatever nothing happened <laughs> <laughs> like, I love those. Yeah. That's real cute. Here adorable. lies a place that's regular. <laughs> <laughs> it's normal. But I was so glad I went because it was for uh, my friend's 40th birthday. We grew up together. We've been um, best friends since second grade. And like I haven't seen her in a long time because we live so far apart. Mm-hmm. And she's the one that his family owned the chocolate yes. factory. Yeah. Oh, so cool. And... My heart is just so full because oh. it was so emotional. Like I could not get a hold of my tears because she started crying and then forget it. Oh, I love that. You deserve all those lovey-dovey, wonderful, warm feelings. I mean, we were just a mess. It was so special and I just love her family and her sister, Samantha, is a brainiac. Hey, and shout out to Samantha. <laughs> shout out to Samantha. And... um we were just, it was just a really special time. And if you have a friend like that from your um, childhood, then you are a lucky person because yeah. if you find one, you're blessed. Yes. That Aww. was wonderful. And you had an event in San Diego. How'd that go? <gasps> it went oh so well. I mean, there was a little, oh my God. I had a few stopping polite moments that were really annoying in the morning. At the event? No, not at the event. In like... <sighs> I'm like getting ready for the event and I go to Kinko's to like print a whole bunch of stuff out. Like the morning of, I'm like finalizing the night before with Ashley about like what we want and the slides, like these little packets we're going to give to people. Yeah. And so like, you know, that morning I go to Kinko's thinking it's going to be a real quick trip. Turns into like a half an hour ordeal all because this jerkhead Robert manager, yeah, calling (laughs) you out, Rob. He, uh... (laughs) I'm sitting there like printing everything, doing fine. He does that thing where the guy comes up to you and is like, can I help you with anything? And then like in that tone, that's (laughs) like- Why are you mad about that? No, it's different. He didn't really want to help me with anything. He wanted to like put the moves on. Oh, oh, oh. It was like that. I'm like, you know, and and I've already printed like three, I clearly know what I'm doing. (laughs) And then I like- like i don't know snubbed him or whatever the word i brushed him off i kind of gave him mm-hmm. the brush off and he proceeded to like be rude to me for the next half hour wow and like he was helping me and then uh somebody else came in and they like were shipping something and then i go back up like you know could i get and this is after i you know gave him the brush off and i'm like uh do you think I, you can get those papers that like you just printed he's like hang on i'm helping these people oh. and so then they leave so now it's just me there and he's helping. And then he's re- he re- printed it incorrectly freaking three times and then wouldn't listen to me how I wanted it printed. Then another guy comes in to ship stuff. And what does he do? Fucking helps that guy. And then tells me to wait. And I was like, hold on a sec. You told me to wait when you were helping the other people. Then I waited for oh. them to leave. Now it's my turn and you're helping me. And this other wait, guy comes in. Wait, did you say that? I did. Wow. Because I was like, mm. I'm just really yeah. frustrated here because I'd really like to, fin- you know, get this done. And he was like, it gave me some answer that was snooty. And I just was like fuming. I'm like, Sarah, pick your battles, pick your battles. Mm. But, you know, it was like that took, that was like w- the one thing that kind of like 
I don't know, started my day off not so pleasant. So I had to kind of like relax and chill. And thank goodness it was such a wonderful, mindful event with great workouts and everything because... You needed it. Yes, I totally needed it. And I was like recharged. The event itself, so awesome. I mean, she did such a great job of putting this together. The first year she's ever done it, we're totally going to do them again. And there was a big turnout. Everybody sat and you know, participated in the, uh, the mindfulness and, and mental health portion of it. And it was just like how you feel when you hang out with a bunch of people who are, you know, uh, on the same kind of journey and want the same things and are, are supporting and lifting each other up. And there were tears and laughter and it's just like fun to do those things and be part of your community. And, yes. and, you know, it's important to kind of connect. And we talked a lot about the importance of connection and like, you know, connecting to your community and yeah, it's, I think it's, I just was reading about how that is the biggest predictor of well-being yes. is connections with I, other I mean, humans. It's the, at the, at the most, well, what you can see is when we completely take that away, I even said this during the presentation about the importance of connection and how you see that with the, you know, the orphans and the, those studies that they did however many years ago where the like orphans in Russia or wherever the heck it was, um, they uh, uh, died when they didn't have love and they didn't have yeah. nurture and touch and, and connection and all that. Like the, you cannot survive without human connection. Yeah. And they gave them their basic needs, but because they weren't cuddled and nurtured and held and felt connected, they don't do well. So yeah. don't, why on earth do you think we would <laughs> not need that as a baby and not need that as a grown up? Right. Yeah. It's fundamental to the human totally. experience. Yes. And another thing that we need is to eat, of course. Yep. But we don't want to have to worry about it. We don't want to have to no. think about the recipes and the ingredients. And that's why we love HelloFresh, right? Yes. So much. On. We love it so much. It. When Sarah's over here recording, we usually end up at our table afterwards eating some HelloFresh meals. They are so easy. They're yeah. delicious. And they deliver all the ingredients and everything you need right to your door. And it's flexible. So you can add extra meals to your weekly order. If you need more, you can add yummy add-ons like garlic bread and cookie dough. You can change the delay. I know, right? Like, don't tempt me. Take of that. God. There's something for everyone. They have um, calorie smart meals. They have a menu series called Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers that are delicious. And you don't have to go to the grocery store, which I really, really love. And it's so fun to cook with Lincoln as well. Um, And they have a deal for you guys. If you haven't tried it yet, what are you waiting for? For $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash BrainCandy80 and enter BrainCandy80. Again, that's $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash BrainCandy80 and enter code BrainCandy80 at checkout. It's like getting uh, $20 off your first four boxes. Um, Such a good deal. I feel like the deals keep getting better. I know. And I feel like the meals keep getting better. Yeah. Oh, like, my gosh. We've had some real winners lately. Yeah. Like the figgy pork balsamic. It's freaking great. Yes. And there's a, a, a bread, like a breaded chicken, like a panko chicken one. Oh, that yeah. I had. We just had that. Oh, that's the one where I ate two, so I ate both servings. And it was not dry. I was shocked. No. Right. Yeah. That's a good mm-hmm. point. Yeah. And it teaches me a bunch of tricks. I was like, oh, you brush it in egg yolk. Okay. I could do that with every chicken I make forever now. <laughs> so that's for how they forever. get it to be delicious. <laughs> oh, God. Sarah, you make me laugh. Oh, well. You know. Like nobody I know. You set um, me up for it. I know something else that'll make you laugh. Oh, God. Can't how- wait. Is it this- about poop? Oh, my God. It is. <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh my gosh. Well, so how I found out about this, there is the coolest, this is like a, a, a three-parter almost of hilariousness. So there is, have you ever heard of the, I think you say it, the Ig Nobel Prize Awards? No. Oh, Suze, you mm-hmm. will love this. Okay. So there is a uh, an award show, kind of like an award show. It's like the nerds doing a roast of like themselves so all the people who would normally go to like the nobel prize awards do this um like uh, a parody uh, uh, yes so it's an award it's like a nobel prize but for the most ridiculous 
experiments and stuff that they've done (laughs) all year. And you know how they kick it off? This is my favorite part. They kick it off with a group uh, paper airplane toss. Really? Yes, it's real cute. They do a countdown and then everybody gets their paper airplanes ready. And it's just like science nerdy jokes the whole time. And they have really all the really funny research, all the stuff that like, you're like, why on earth did anybody research this? But they did. It's all like, uh, so one of the things that they researched was um, wombat poop. And did you know that wombat poop is cubed? No. Oh, I just saw this picture. Yes. On um, social media. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. How is this possible? It's something about their digestive tract. Is shaped like a square? Like the way that they can, like it contracts. And like they tend to be a fairly stressed out animal. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like, yeah, it says says that it when. Poop enters the second half of the wombat's digestive system. Water is removed, and it becomes two-thirds as wet as its own feces. Weird. And uh, this formation of the poop cubes in the digestive tract is similar to the cooling of lava into hexagons, the researchers explained, like those found in Giant Causeway, Ireland. Truly, both are equally magnificent demonstrations of the nature at its most powerful. So when it comes out, is it more like a blob and then it sort of forms like a cube as no. it dries? Oh, good question. No, I think it comes out like that. Okay, okay. It and exits in a cube formation. Yeah. It says uh, when, they, <laughs> when, they, when the team accepted award, the award, they uh, proudly proclaimed that this work was scientific proof that you can squeeze a square peg into a round hole. <laughs> <laughs> so Isn't their that... butthole is what you're telling me is round, like a normal butthole. Yes, and how they contract and like what or Get what happens in like town. the cooling system like whatever the cooling is in there oh internally yes I internally see. yeah <laughs> isn't that crazy yes yeah so i guess with the water removed from it it like dry yeah kind of like wow. how like cracks in like the desert kind of form that pattern when you like suck all the water out of it or like uh-huh yes but so. you wonder then why other animals don't have cube poop Good question. You know what I mean? Yeah, or good point. Yes. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Other things they researched. Uh, uh, which testicle is warmer? Oh, my God. It was found. Do we know? The left one. Is warmer. And what they did is they looked at mo- uh, uh, mail carriers and bus drivers who were no sitting way. and like the difference between people who had like breezy jobs where their balls were like free Stop and it. I'm not kidding. That's why and this is the most hilarious. The it was always the left. That was like a little bit more, a little bit warmer. Why would you suppose? I have no, okay, let's see. And yeah. the, the, the headlines, like the, the, that's like one of my favorite parts. It's how warm <laughs> okay. is a French postman's left scrotum? <laughs> it's so specific. Right. Yeah, it <laughs> says uh, that on average temperatures on the left side uh, seem to be warmer than the right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the left side was found to be warmer by 0. To 0. 0.0 degrees like... Celsius. But for bus drivers, it was even more. Oh, my God. Yes. The fact that my dad was a bus driver. I know, that's why really it was hilarious. <laughs> right. I was like, oh my gosh. And well, like, do you think it's because of something about like the location of the heart in the body or something? Oh my God. Really good. You know, that's the thing is like, this was an article about the um, awards. Right. Yeah, and so you're like, each one was broken up. So, now, but I just looked, I just clicked on like, you know, how they give you like the little link that'll click, link you to the actual study. And the study itself was called Thermal Asymmetry of the Human Scrotum. So <laughs> oh I can like, you know, go through uh, That's uh, right. the, you know, but I'll just include this in our, in our, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the newsletter. newsletter. And you yeah. can catch up on scrotums for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you you can do the dirty work. Yes, on that. <laughs> right. There are oh, graphs and everything, fun. and it's just like hilarious that you know this is like what people are researching and all that. Why do you think it's called the egg? No, what, what do you I think was that thinking means? that I like I I was trying to figure out what that was and what I think is there a person that that oh, is maybe named after? It must be. Yeah. What and a then hoot. yeah, and I just like that they also call it like. Like this one was the 29th first annual I, Ing, Ing Awards, you know? And I just like that that's like a cute, it's really funny. It's like to honor I research wonder, that makes people laugh and then think. 
Do you think they give them any prizes? Oh, yes. That's, oh my God, that's one of the funniest <laughs> parts. I took a photo of it because I was like, I have to remember what, uh, um, what it's, wait, let me take, let me see what it's called. Um, oh, it's so funny. They, the prize is, brrr, uh, oh my God, I have to pull it up. You're gonna have to edit this. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, there are 10 prizes presented to the winners, and this year the winners took home a prize of 10 trillion Zimbabwean dollars, which roughly <laughs> translates to 40 American cents. What? <laughs> yes, isn't that part great too? Uh, Wait a cause minute. Because it's like a joke. Like, this isn't like the real, you know, it's like totally a really the- a chance to get together. Kind of like the, I think of this as the, oh, what's the, the hasty f- pudding awards? Oh, I don't even know what that is, but that's adorable. Oh. Oh. Tell me what that is. <laughs> that's the Harvard Lampoon's, um, oh, yeah. like, Oscars equivalent, but for the worst films of the year. And oh, actors. that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of kind of like the the press, what's the... the oh, yeah. The correspondence correspondence dinner. Correspondence dinner. Yes. Yeah. We're like, you know, we're just, we're giving you all a nod and saying that we respect everything that you're doing, but, you know, all this other stuff. Like, But, the, but it's funny, but too. But it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very cute. Yeah, I should just put this whole article in there and you guys can click because other ones are like, can pizza cure cancer? Can <laughs> Oh, this is fascinating. Can surgeons be trained like dogs? I read a little bit of this and they can. They use oh the God. click training and it's been proven to be really successful with surgeons where you don't even need to give them the instructional videos. You just train them as they watch to respond to the clicks and turns out it, it works. Huh. Yeah. A team of researchers had successfully used these techniques on fact, factory workers, professional golfers, dog trainers, which is kind of funny, right. and <laughs> surgeons. I love it. That's yes. really fun. I know. Well, it was like, that's what I was laughing at when, you know, we first, uh, you right. know, first were starting today. I was like <laughs> giggling to myself in the corner. Here's another uh, awesome scientific situation that will also make you look beautiful. There is a company that I had never heard of called Charles and Colvard who create gorgeous gemstones mm-hmm. out of a meteor crater. Well, I already love this. And it's called moissanite. It's a gem. Oh, this is what Have I wanted instead it? of a diamond. Yes. Sus, I wanted this. Cause, just because I like what it is. Yes. I, 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 no joke, like, fought for this to be my ring. Right? Good Here's, thing I'll get another well, opportunity to get yeah, it. <laughs> next time. Next time I'll have one. It's like a the, freaking space ring. Yes. It's so it's cool. It's a mineral so rare yes. that it has to be made in a lab. It's ethically sourced, yep. conflict-free, set in 95% recycled precious metals, and it has more fire and brilliance than any other gemstone in the world. I, I never heard of it. You're so wise it's that you gorgeous. already knew. Well, you can go back in my <laughs> Pinterest boards from about five years ago and see a <laughs> bunch of really beautiful ones that I saved. And, see? At, and the price of these, one-tenth what a diamond is. Well, that's the thing. Maybe less, actually. Or maybe more than that. Or like, you know, whatever. You guys should check them out. Charles and Colvard, they've been creating and perfecting moissanite for over 20 years. It's the world's most brilliant gem. It's just such a cool concept because a lot of, you know, the problems with the gemstone industry are problematic. Things aren't ethically sourced. And there is a lot of terrible things that go on about it. So this is just a great way to have beautiful jewelry, but without the terrible... Um, issues that it can pr- cause. And um, you can learn more and get 20% off with our <gasps> what? special- What? These are a sponsor? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Well, I didn't know that. With our special listener offer at charlesandcolvard.com slash brain candy. Again, that's charlesandcolvard.com slash brain candy to get that 20 for- 20% off. It's just beautiful. I have a pair of earrings for you, as a matter of fact. Oh, <gasps> for me. That, yes. <laughs> That are stunning. Oh my god! You can get engagement rings, wedding rings, oh you know, bridal so jewelry, all that stuff. It's just gorgeous. You're gonna die. I can't wait. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's fun. Talk about putting the cart in front of the horse. I'm gonna be shopping for engagement rings while I haven't even <laughs> like gone on my first dates yet. <laughs> that's hilarious. Like, it's never too soon. Here's you know the what I deal. Mean? This is what I want. She's a planner. <laughs> I'm a planner. What can I say? Oh, well, that's funny. I, whenever I was on my uh, journey the other day uh, to Philadelphia, I happened at the same time to see an article about how 
I mean, I'm sure you already know this, but they did a study about airline water. No, I do not know that. Oh, no. What? Well, I had read before, like, you know, ask for no ice because the ice is so gross. But they even said, don't even wash your hands (gasps) with it. No. Yes, that it's like basically diarrhea. (laughs) Oh, my God. Well, okay, okay. I can kind of understand this because, oh, God, I read something recently that was like, how long should you drink water out of your water bottle? Like, Yes. And it was like one to two days. Yeah, because the plastic breaks down. You have to clean it out. Not even that. Like if you have a metal one with a straw or whatever, because the back, like if you sip on it and you, the bacteria from your mouth oh, travels no. down and like lives inside of that. Oh, okay. And then it just starts to kind of grow and spread. So if you have people like washing all that dirty, nasty shit off their hands, all that kind of stuff just sits in the sides of everything and everything, nothing ever gets like deep cleaned. Mm-hmm. They don't like t- clean the tanks of the water, you know? And then it just is recycled. And they said in this article that if you drink water that's been, that has that kind of bacteria in it, that'll give you symptoms of almost like hay fever and like a sore throat and, uh, Ew. um, so what's gross. it called? Uh, uh, post nasal drip and whatever. And I get that all the time that feeling. And I was like, oh my God, maybe it's from all this shit. So mm-mm. no, that I'll be bringing bottled disgusting. water for sure. <laughs> Nasty. Well, and like I brought, um, you know, the, what do you call that? Sanitizer? I guess it's sanitizer, the stuff. And I'm just going to use that instead of. Oh, like water sanitizers? Just like the alcohol what? that you can use on your hands to clean oh, yeah, them yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of oh, freaking of washing them with yes. like BM yeah. water. <laughs> oh my god! Right, and you know what? While you're at it, use those use those wipes on your seat. Ew! Right? Because man, once Landon, I swear. Oh my god! I'm calling him out. Got pink eye, <laughs> and I swear to God, it's from airplane seats. Well, maybe I said that. Well, and that's that what the doctor sense. said too. That's what the the eye doctor was like. Yeah, were you recently on a plane? Yeah, this happens a lot for people who travel often. Because Ugh. like you put your head on the you're like resting on there and who knows and ugh. yeah people are I know, gross. I try not to be an alarmist about that stuff because right. we're just all swimming in our own BM. But mm-hmm. like at a certain point, it's like oh that is foul, yeah, right? You know what grosses me out now? Dressing rooms. I don't know why. Really? I because I feel like I feel like nobody's like these places where a lot of people go, but nobody ever thinks to like thoroughly clean. Yeah, good point. That touch, that it, when you touch things. So like, I'm really grossed out by that oily residue that's on doors where people grab often. Yeah. And I see that on dressing rooms now. And it's like, as soon as you start to look for it, you see it. And so I have Ugh. to be like you, or I try not to be an alarmist. And I just be like, it's fine. These are germs that are, we're supposed to be exposed to. But well, then I just think like, what's on their hands? Retail and right. we know they're not cleaning that. Sue's I have had custom, when I worked at Forever 21, there were three times where somebody, which I hope God to God it was a child, peed in the dressing room. <laughs> and when I worked at Nordstrom, there was a shit incident. So come shit on. Shit incident. Yes. A and it incident. really was an incident. Like it was a deal. Ordeal would have been maybe Would you a better say word. that it was like an accident where it just no. like. This was, this was a. <laughs> No. Uh, this was an individual who was mentally disturbed and oh, no. w- yes. And ca- like I worked at the San Francisco Nordstrom that's like right in downtown, okay. yeah. right off a of market. It's like, yeah. you know, all right there in, um, yeah, you see all walks of life, all walks of life who walked right through the door and right into the restroom and <laughs> used, uh, no, the fitting room, right? Yeah. The well, this one was the, re- this one was the okay. restroom, but he did not, it did not, it was not contained to the toilet. <laughs> And he <laughs> painted the walls of the bathroom with... No. Uh-huh. And this was the crazy part. At Nordstrom, oh. they have a rule for employees. Like, there's the time that they close, but then if a customer, like per Nordstrom's policy, if, a cus- if you are working on a floor that still has a customer shopping, you can't yeah. leave. They stay right. open until the last customer is out of there. So <laughs> they considered him... Fucking customer. I and well, so it, we could not leave. So he was in the stall or whatever, taking his sweet time right. painting a poop portrait. Correct. And somebody called the cops or security, and then security yeah. called the cops, and the cops had to come, and we had to sit there and wait. And I was like, this, I feel like this is like one of those 
letter of the law and spirit of the law things <laughs> where you should like kind of understand that now it's yeah. after midnight and maybe we should go because why I'm catering to this kind of crazy is insane. Yes, I would definitely yeah, agree. I with quit you on that, that job real quick. <laughs> not for, not even just for the 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 uh, the poo stuff. That wasn't even the tipping point for you, right? Imagine that. And I understand now why you have issues with. I've been LOLing ever since that episode a few weeks ago where you were like, "What is my number one fear?" And I'm like. Things that scurry and mysterious wetness. Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, yes, and both apply to garbage. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. You said, oh my God, I wish I could remember. That's the problem is I listen to our episodes and then I, like while I'm driving, <laughs> you said something that was so funny that I'll remember it and I'll, I'll text it to you. You know, now it's like we're just not even well, on a podcast and just I, talking over I was just wondering. Like, I love this I about was, you. When I... When I was LOLing about it, I thought, I wonder when she discovered her fear of mysterious wetness. Oh. Uh, like if there was something that caused it. Yeah. I or think not. living in New York, I think it was Brooklyn that did it. But I must have been, <laughs> I must have not liked, I think what what also I, I didn't like is I, it's the, especially like wet bathroom floors. And yeah. because I played water polo, we mm-hmm. would always go into the restroom like wet and you have and to change. And- it would just be like, I don't, you know, like I know where my, the water on my feet came from, but there's water over there. And I don't know if that was because that person just got out of the pool. So Or not, right. Or not, right. So I don't know, but it really grosses me out. One thing that doesn't gross me out is how much money I save using stamps.com. Mm-hmm. I mean... What do I have to do to convince you people? If you are shipping things, you have got to use this service because who has the time to sit in traffic, go to the post office, lug all your packages? It's such a hassle. But with stamps.com, you can do everything right from your desk or wherever you happen to be shipping from, any package or class of mail. And you get a deal because it's five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Um, And it's just a no-brainer. It saves you time and money. And uh, they have a deal for you guys. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale, which I use mine all the time, without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Brain Candy. That's stamps.com, and enter Brain Candy. We love a deal. I remember the thing that you said that was hilarious. Right? When, we were doing, when we were doing the Flintstone episode, the episode where yeah. we were talking about the, the lady with the Flintstone house, and yeah. I was looking at the pictures, and I'm like, yeah, it's like cool. It's kind of got like a mid-century modern vibe. And you were like, yeah, which century? I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, I missed it when you said that on the, when we were recording. And I listened to that, and I was like dying. I'm like, that is so funny. I don't know why that just tickles me so much. But just the way you said it, I was like, yeah, which century? Who knows? But middle of one of them. I miss yours all the time too because, you know, we're like looking at our notes or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so that happens to me all the time too when I listen back and I'm like, she just said something hilarious. Sometimes you'll go... Suze, that was really funny. Like you'll want me to know that I'm you like, excuse said me, something. you need to laugh at this. Like, yeah. You should definitely be laughing right now. <laughs> I need um, the validation. What can I say? <laughs> no, I mean you're a laugh a minute, so it's hard to catch oh all goodness. the jokes. I am like my cheeks already hurt from <laughs> laughing today. <laughs> um, I saw a f- documentary that mm-hmm. I wanted to tell you about. Um, I was using uh, the library's free digital movie service, which mm-hmm. I want you all to try. And there was a documentary, I believe it was called The Witness, but it might have just been Witness. Um, and it was about a murder that happened. I'm sure you have read about it in New York um, like 40 years ago or whatever, um, where a woman was murdered on the street sort of in the middle of the night. And um, there was supposedly... Over thirty. This witnesses. is the bystander effect. Yes. Thing. yes, yes. I reference this all the time. I need to watch this. You have to because oh man, they talked about how this case became the yes. sort of textbook example of the bystander effect and exploring why people t- don't take action or yes. whatever. And the person that made the film was the woman's brother. The oh murdered my woman's god! Brother. I need so to see this. It's great, and it really got my wheels turning about so many things because it begins with this um, exploration of the the trauma of knowing that all these people 
could have saved her life because she was stabbed and then she was still alive and calling for help and walking around for a long time and nobody did anything. And then he came back and finished it off. So oh, somebody I didn't even could have, know that. Yeah, like somebody this is could so have. so sad. So sad. So you can imagine that feeling that he has of like haunting him of like, yeah. what if? What if somebody yeah. had just simply done something? Cared. Right. Yeah. Then he starts trying to f- meet the witnesses and ask them and things get a bit murky as far as like, what what did people actually see? And was it really all these people's apathy that caused her death or what. So he starts exploring that. And all of the while, you know, we're seeing him on screen and he's in a wheelchair and he has um, been, he is amputate. He's an amputee, Mm -hmm. uh, both of his legs. And they only later in the film describe that he eventually, after her death, (gasps) went to Vietnam. And... Um, that's where he lost his legs. And the reason he went to Vietnam was because he wouldn't allow himself to be somebody who just stood around and didn't take action. And then now he doesn't have his legs as a result. But we're starting to wonder, were they really bystanders who did nothing? And did he go to Vietnam for no reason in pursuit of not being apathetic? What do you even mean? Like he was inspired to go into the military because he didn't want to be one of these people who just sits around and does nothing. So is he making the argument that maybe people didn't just sit around and it was like bad police work or something? Bad police work and (gasps) maybe lazy journalism where they just went running with this idea that wasn't actually true. Well, oh my gosh, this is like a Malcolm Gladwell book waiting to happen. Right. And he goes to the journalists and he says, like, why didn't, why did you report this or that? And they're like, well, the New York Times did. So we did like New York Times set the bar. Oh my God. It was fascinating. And then it's like four movies in one, because then you learn about her and the fact that she had secrets and like, you know, she wasn't who her family thought she was. And you're like, holy shit, this story is incredible. And I don't know anyone that's seen the film. Yeah. I've never heard. I can't believe I've never heard of this. Maybe it's because it got a little muddled and you think, what is this about? Is this about a crime? Is this about their family? Is this about his life? Maybe that's why, but I loved it. So I would recommend it. Good recommendation. I can't wait. Yeah. So, and I thought you would be into it because of the bystander effect, which I was yes. certain you had studied. A hundred. And I talk about it in my What's your take on that? On the bystander effect? Yeah. Like, what do you talk about when you talk about that idea? Well, I'm talking about uh, 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 the bystander effect in stepping in when when you see somebody in a situation where they look like they you know, could be potentially at risk of, of somebody like sexually assaulting them and kind of like okay. recognizing like, and we come up with ways to discuss like, how do you, st- how do you stop that? How do you take action? So like, um, uh, stepping in and having like a, uh, an excuse or some story mm-hmm. or something like that, like, Hey, d- can you help me find my keys real quick? And things like that that kind of get them to break stop, it, like, like stop yes, that yes, motion. Totally. Well, is the argument for within psychology that this is something that humans have a problem with and that we tend to, um, you know, like when I described the tsunami alarm and how everyone just stood there? Yeah. Where yeah. we're sort of like, what what do we do? And so we're all looking for a leader. And if no one leads, Correct. we just stand there. Is that yeah. this sort yes. of idea? Totally. Okay. We're looking for, you know, like, First thing you got to do is like recognize that something is wrong. And yeah. in order to recognize something is wrong, usually we get cues from our environment. Mm-hmm. And if our environment is giving us the cues that nothing is wrong, like nobody's doing anything, yeah, it's hard to take further action. And yeah. then you got to be direct and step in and intervene. And then you got to distract and like change the situation. And then you've got to delegate, like this is all the steps of being a bystander and delegate, like go to a higher authority or find like if you've stepped in, like now, like those people, for example, like maybe they think of all these steps that they have to do and it's like somehow in their mind not worth it or too much energy. And so it's like, okay, I got to re- first see that something's wrong. Then I got to like intervene. Then I got to create a distraction or diversion. Then I have to like call the police or delegate or whatever. And then the last part, you're supposed to have like a, a 
offer the supportive resources or like care for the the victim. And that's, I don't know. I feel like first a, a, an individual has to feel empowered and like a, like have autonomy to mm-hmm. feel like they can do that. And if you're somebody who maybe yourself has been victimized or um, you just feel like you don't have the power to make any change or make a difference, then you don't, I don't even think you would engage in step one. Right. And that so. is so frustrating about human behavior, isn't it? About how, like we almost doubt our own instincts. Yeah, totally. I remember there was a guy on Oprah one time talking about that very thing about how for whatever reason we are, so we sort of train ourselves to deny our own biological and evolutionary instincts Mm. And we're sort of like, mm, no, I'm sure everything's fine rather than taking action. Because like in oh. the case of this murder, okay. it w- it's not difficult to call 911. And right. even if it's really not an emergency, there's really no harm done if you're not doing it all the time. Right. And so wonder what it is that makes someone think, well, I'll just go back to bed if that is what oh, happened. God. Yeah. I would never. I would never do that. I don't think. I wouldn't. I don't know if I... But then there's... So like the other night... I heard some loud noises that okay. sounded like, you know, I've never really heard gunfire. Right. Like, you know, in that real life know. outside yeah. of like a yeah. firing range that like, you know, I've got headphones on. I know what is happening. Yeah. Um, so I don't really, but I hear that it sounds like ba- the backfiring of a car. Yeah. And, or like fireworks. And so I heard these, like a few of these pops. And my first instinct was like, oh my God, is that a gun? Like, was that gunfire? And then another part of my brain jumped in that was like, Sarah, you're being an alarmist. True. That's not gunfire. True. Like, it's probably just that. Yeah, don't but, be hysterical. Yes. That yeah. is, I think, what everybody goes through. I see. And that's I it. See. And I didn't do anything. I just okay. like, because what that would mean, it's like, am I prepared for what that would mean if I got the answer of like, yes, that is that. Right. Okay. Well, this, however, in, I get that. I get that with the gunfire, and I always think to myself, I would not want to be shot on July Fourth because nobody, oh. nobody would fucking call nine one one because they're going to assume it's fireworks. Point. But in this case, the woman was screaming for I help. Know. I know. So, and she said, "I've been stabbed." There's no way I could do you nothing. Call There's no way. You would. now that makes me suspicious because I think that you're really right they, that they did. Yes, and they said uh, they said they did. So, oh my know, god! I guess we'll never know. But right. one thing I definitely do know is I like clear skin, and now I have it. Thank you, BioClarity. I'm not joking. <laughs> right? Not we. We're dead serious <laughs> over here about this. <laughs> we really are because I have terrible skin. If I just had, let it, yeah, and now it is glowing. It's healthy. Yeah, your I, skin has been looking great. It really, it's, I mean, I've shown you the before picture, Sarah. Yes, I do know of them. <laughs> I use the clear skin routine because I have breakout prone skin. It's a three-step process. It's super easy and very um, gentle. Mm-hmm. It doesn't cause irritation, but it still works and handles all those spots, which are so embarrassing and I hate them. Um, it's 100% vegan, cruelty-free, non-toxic sulfate free, all that good stuff. And they have a 100% risk free money back guarantee. I love that we still have brainiacs who haven't done it and they're like, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> Cause you must get healthier, yeah. more radiant skin by going to bioclarity.com. It's so effective. And the, the products are actually affordable, unlike their competitors. And right yes. now for our listeners, you can save 15% off everything on their website. Incredible deal. You need to enter our code brain candy at checkout. Just go to bioclarity.com and get 15% off everything on their website. When you use our code brain candy at checkout. And don't, don't skip out on the anti-puff eye gel because that I- shit is like a lifesaver. If you're like, yeah, Ooh, she looks all glowy and well rested. It's that. I use it twice a day. I use it every morning and every night before I put my makeup on and then after I take it off. Mm -hmm. It's so great. And I apply it with my little cool uh, rose quartz roller and it feels all nice. Oh my gosh, you're always bragging about that thing. I know, I love it. It's just like my (laughs) little routine, you know, to feel fancy. Listen to this though. Uh, This is a film I have not yet seen and we have to watch it. 
Mm -hmm. friend Leah told me about it. She had it on her phone. She goes, I've been dying to tell you about this. So have you heard about it? It's called The Farewell. No. So this filmmaker, it's... um, It's a movie with actors, not a documentary, but it's based on her real life. And her grandma was, uh, I believe they're Chinese, but they're of Asian origin. And um, the grandma was diagnosed with terminal cancer and was given not long to live. But in their culture, the doctor doesn't tell the patient. The doctor Uh calls the family and tells them, and they get to decide whether to tell oh. the person because they believe that you do not die from the cancer, you die from fear. I believe this in a way. Okay. I, You're going to love that this. gives me chills everywhere. Me too. This is a mindset thing. Okay. So, oh, I love it. So the family decides they're not going to tell the grandma, and um, – But they wanted to like sort of celebrate her and have a special thing, but they couldn't tell her why. So this, the woman that made the film decided she was going to move up her wedding to be like in the next few weeks, just so Mm -hmm. everyone would come to town and they would have a chance to say goodbye to grandma without actually saying goodbye. So they do this and here's what's weird. I didn't see the film, but in real life, the grandmother, this was, I don't know, 10 years ago. The grandmother is still alive. Oh, I love it. Okay, so... I think this is beautiful (laughs) and amazing. We're doing everything wrong over here with how we talk about death. Yep, yep, Here's what's absolutely bonkers. The grandmother still doesn't know. And this film is being made by her grandmother, uh, granddaughter. Oh, my God. And they are trying to prevent the grandmother from seeing this movie. Oh my god, it's so funny! Remember the episode of Friends where where Joey was on, supposed to be on Law and Order, and he invites his grandma over, yeah. and she like, yeah. and they like slip in a tape that's like of something else to like can make her think that that. Mm-hmm. That was it. It feel like the family has to do something like that. <laughs> they have to have like a, a fake video that they like put in real quick, and it's like, and it looks. The weirdest part is, well, I don't know if it's the weirdest part. Yeah. Another weird part is that the grandma did this very thing to the grandfather, her um, husband. Uh, he did die eventually, but... Um, As people do. <laughs> Can't live forever, Sue. <laughs> They're not immortal. Right. Turns out. <laughs> but I am just gobsmacked. And I also love to, the idea, uh, I want to have the conversation of whether there is something to this notion that fear is the thing that actually kills us rather than the illness. What do I you mean, think? Yeah. I think when those kind of worry thoughts, anything that kind of creates that, like resets the brain, you know, to start strengthening like neural pathways about death and pain and you're, I don't know. And I just stress. feel like, and stress. And mm-hmm. we know the effects of stress on the body are severe. So if we can eliminate that, there's a documentary that, that's on Netflix that people keep telling me to see. I think it's called like health or it's like one word like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Is it about diagnosing those illnesses? It's about people who are sick and then like, the power of, or I think it's called like heal and the power of the mind in, in kind of like the same situation, a bunch of people who have been, uh, diagnosed with like terminal illnesses and what happens, or maybe like they couldn't get a diagnosis for some things and, or, or didn't have answers and focused more on the thought of being healthy and that like cured them. I'm going to have to figure out what this one is called. I definitely think these are all things that play a part in our, you know, well-being and health and that certainly stress and fear can exacerbate a condition. Yeah. I just wish there was... Oh, 100%. It seems like there should be kind of a a marrying of the two, the Western and Eastern Well, we're seeing this in mindfulness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was saying that in the event that we did, you know, I'm like... The research that we have that's coming out now is just saying, yeah, everything that, that you know, these, these 
you know, century old cultures have been saying about the power of the mind and meditation and creating, you know, open space in your mind and all this stuff are true. Yeah. 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 I just, I love the conversation. I love this concept. And, and also the woman that made the film, she is um, American. So her family is Asian and lives there, but she's trying to navigate that balance between the culture and what her family does and what she feels intuitively and intellectually about health and (laughs) disease. I just think we have to open up our, I mean, the placebo effect alone gives us so much info. So if you combine all those, that, those things that we know to be true, we really, you know, I feel like in a way it's kind of a I don't know, some sort of like HIPAA violation in in the United States to not give them their medical, you know? And now that I think Mm -hmm. about it, we kind of, in therapy, when we're working with clients, go go back and forth on, do you discuss the diagnosis that you've given your client with your client? Well. Sometimes it's a benefit, sometimes it's not. Okay, tell me more about that. So say you're working with an individual who has very, um, who's like very high functioning, like, uh, well, now it's not in the DSM anymore, but for all purposes of argument, sure. Asperger's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What would it mean if that individual was given the diagnosis? Is this something mm-hmm. that will change yeah, his helpful? identity and yeah. be helpful? Or will it be something that adds a label to them that they feel is like, I don't know, what are they going to do with that information? Yeah. Really? Well, and I'm sure it varies. It does. And that's what you kind of have to be. You have to know the client. You have to know if they will benefit from this, if it's something that could add, like what's their, their uh, you know, mental state at the time in which you're going to tell them, you know, if it's somebody who's like borderline, it can, who has like borderline personality, sometimes, you know, with that black and white kind of thinking, you may create an enemy with your client if you tell them that they have that and they may right. never trust you again. So you have to work with the diagnosis without disclosing the diagnosis because the nature of that personality disorder is that they will reject any of those ideas that, uh, uh, you know, counter right. what their view of their, yeah. like, you know, you're either with them or against them, you know, you're either on their side or they need to destroy you. So you don't want any It would really freak me out though if I went to a traditional medical doctor and knew that if I had a terminal illness that they weren't going to tell me. Yeah, that does seem a little freaky, right? Yeah, I'm surprised that people willingly participate in that ritual. Well, I I, like jokingly but not jokingly say... um, uh, uh, you know, I wish my doctor would just give me placebos. I know, I, me too. I think I'm so... Yeah, oh, you're the, very... What's yes. that word? Suggestible? To- like, totally... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is that term? Inf- like, easily... There's a, there's yeah, a phrase that, for like that. Like the hypnotists but I'm that. Yes. always use. Yes, highly susceptible to hypnosis. Mm-hmm. I am <laughs> really... Because I, I think it's just easy for me to go to that place where I kind of like surrender... And let my mind be like neutral in a way. Mm-hmm. And it's great for meditation. I've like practiced that a lot, but it also allows like, you know, you're just in a very pliable. Yeah. Place. Yeah. Which is, has its perks and down, downfalls totally. for sure. Totally. Totally. I can't wait to see the film though, because yeah. I got to like, I just want this to keep going in my brain to like, sort it out. <laughs> yeah. I think that documentary on Netflix I was talking about is called Heal. Okay. No, I've never heard of it. Yeah. It says scientists and spiritual teachers discuss how thoughts, beliefs, and emotions impact human health and the ability to heal. Huh. And it's won a whole bunch of awards too. Yeah, it was the I number mean, one bestseller in iTunes documentaries for a while in 2017. Wow. How did we miss this? We should probably see this. I, I, I always wonder that about documentaries because yeah. I'm on top of it. And it's, they call it Heal, a fascinating look into the benefits of Eastern medicine. We should be watching this. Yeah, we should. Yeah. I just read an article about that Morgan Spurlock, the guy that did Super Size Oh, me. yes, yes. 
and how he has a, a sequel out that I haven't seen yet, but is available on my library service. Nice. Um, called Holy Chicken, and it's <laughs> you know the super sized meat, but about chicken. Oh my and, god! Uh, we should goes, not be eating that. Right. I mean, he goes sort of, I guess you'd call it undercover or something where he pretends to be a chicken farmer in order to learn all the I thought you were going to say chicken. <laughs> I like pictured him in a chicken soup before you finished that sentence, which is real funny. Why did I do that? And um, the article, though, was interesting because it focused mostly on how he sort of inserted himself into the Me Too movement last year by mm-hmm. writing an op-ed um, saying that he feels like he was a part of the problem and he mistreated some people and he had to, um, he cheated on all the people he's ever been with. And it was just this weird thing that he put out on his own. No one was even accusing him of anything at that time. And then he went to rehab and my impression is that this is a, like a narcissist who was like, Oh, I can use this terrible situation in society to act like I'm self-righteous. But I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe his intentions were good. That was just my impression. But um, I did. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, No, no, go ahead. Mm. I love it. I love his films. I think he's talented, but it just seems like, why are you doing that? It's weird. I do have like a vague memory of reading something back when he did the supersize me about his wife's feelings on everything. Yes. And how he was kind of, yeah, he was like forcing her to enforcing whatever that means, but like to participate or to like, and she's like, this is not my life. And it seems kind of like narcissistic if you expect everybody to be wrapped up in the things that you care about more than, you know, things that enrich their lives or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to need to need to check that out a little, dig a little deeper. I think he's a bit of an unsavory character, but you Mm -hmm. know, maybe he's learned a lesson or two. I used to have a crush on him. I kind of yeah, he's got he's that cute. like redhead look that I'm into. Oh, yeah. Isn't he kind of redhead? About, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I always forget about your ginger fetish. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm like into it. With the exception Are you into of Wes. Prince Harry? Uh, <laughs> you know what's funny? You say Prince Harry. My schizophrenic aunt, when I was growing up, <laughs> used to tell me that I was going to marry him. <gasps> Interesting. Yeah. Did you agree? Mm, I agree that he was real cute, but uh, yeah. really hard to agree with a schizophrenic aunt who's telling you you're going to marry <laughs> British Stop. nobility. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> hey, it was actually closer than you thought. Yeah, right? Given that he ended up with I know, an American. Hollywood. Yeah. Totally. Starlet. Oh, God. Missed I'm, opportunity. I know. Yeah, yeah he's, 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 super he's watching cute. a different network than uh, the one I appeared on, apparently. What, <laughs> what was Suits on? USA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. It's a great show, by the way. All right. Well, don't forget to leave us that review so Sarah can uh, put it on her date roster. Yeah. You know, what if I just took a picture of that and put it in my Tinder profile? Hilarious. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, yeah, we love so you guys. Ideas. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It. 